Cukester uploaded a video. I think I'm a little late, maybe by like a day or two. But if you don't know who Cukester is, Cukester is like internet historian, okay? He uploads not frequently, but when he does upload, it's usually a banger. So without further ado, let's get into it, man. This is actually a short video. The Fan Fanta's Regrettable Origins. I'm excited to see this. Start. Corporations are a bold law, especially recently when it seems they're not just content to rake in billions of dollars, lobby and manipulate the law, and right. game the system to avoid paying their fair share like the rest of us, but they- <laughs> Billionaires be doing some sneaky stuff, man. Legally, but still. They have the brass neck to then act like paragons of progressive virtue. We've all seen it. Mr. Billion Dollar Corporation gets up on his moral high horse for a sassy marketing campaign, hitching his wagon to whatever hot button socio political topic is trending on Twitter that month. Even if you're sympathetic to that particular cause, these corporations joining in always feels very disingenuous. <laughs> Every time it's February, Twitch holds like a whole. <laughs> black creator month every february youtube's like black history month black creators whenever it's uh memorial day or veterans day shout out to all the veterans that serve here's all your your show time for like the day they don't care about us after all, they're only using it as a vehicle to advertise their crap. But if you're like me, you're less interested in a company's carefully engineered public image and more interested in the skeletons in the closet. The things they'd rather you didn't talk about. The wait, wait, wait. Interested wait, wait. in the skeletons in the closet. The things they Slave labor, sabotage, criminal negligence, sexual improperty. Sounds about normal. I'd rather you didn't talk about. Today we'll be looking at Fanta, which is owned by the Coca-Cola company and was mm. technically created by them, but under circumstances they'd probably prefer you didn't know. Coca-Cola <laughs> was created in America in 1886. Okay. By the next decade, they were a staple American brand. By the 1920s... Wait, damn, that was quick. By the next decade, they were a staple American brand. Damn. By the 1920s, they were setting up operations in Europe, slowly expanding the company into the global empire we know today. In 1933, the German branch of the company came under the leadership of a man named Max Kite. The very same year, another German man would also come to power, although I forget who that was. <laughs> uh, who, who could that have been? I, I don't know, but I hear uh, BMW had uh, some close ties to him. Well, let me look it up. Ah, yes. His name was Adolf Hitler. <laughs> Bro, Cukester always puts Hitler in his videos, man. Well, I don't know if it's on purpose or not, but Hitler always shows up in these Cukester videos. The leader of the Nazi party, Hitler was appointed Chancellor of Germany in 1933. Mm -hmm. While Max Kite was not a member of the Nazi party, he didn't seem close to have ties. a problem with them either, yeah, as he attempted ties. to integrate Coca-Cola into the German identity in the same way as had been done in America to great success, Kite found himself collaborating with the Nazi government to promote Coke. Hey, <laughs> hey, you got to get your bag. The company sponsored the 1936 Berlin Olympics yeah. with the Coca-Cola logo flying happily alongside the swastika. Wasn't there a, a black guy that ran in the, the Nazi Olympics? Like, not the Nazi Olympics, the Olympics hosted by the Nazis. I can't remember if that's happened. At that's the celebration of Koch's 10th anniversary in Germany, Kite organized a mass Sieg Heil in honor of Hitler's 50th birthday. Yikes. Yikes. As Hitler began wrapping up for war, Germany started to come down on foreign businesses, okay. some being outright seized by the government. Kite's Coca-Cola was safe from this, after all, it was an American company, and Germany wasn't at war with America. Yet. So what did Coca-Cola <laughs> yes. HQ back in America make of all this Nazi stuff? What was their stance Germany on Germany's invasions? Again. Well, no stance really. Export of the secret Coke syrup formula continued as usual. Although the war made it hard to obtain the key ingredients in Germany, halting production. And by 1941, the US would enter the war and their trade embargoes forbade Coca-Cola from exporting their syrup to the enemy.
This left Max Kite in a bit of a predicament. He was the head of Germany's Coca-Cola, and he couldn't make Coca-Cola. That's like running a McDonald's with no access to cow rectums. How the fuck are you gonna make the burgers? Wait, what? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> no more McDonald's for me. Kite wasn't going to give up on the company so easily, though. If he couldn't make American Coke, he'd just have to make Nazi Coke. Making a whole new formula was going to be difficult with wartime rationing, though. The best Kite could get his hands on was the scraps left by the food industry. Essentially, waste. Things like leftover fruit pulp from cider pressing and whey, the liquid remains of cheese curdling. This new beverage was made from the leftovers of the leftovers, but it was the best they could do given the circumstances. It certainly Please wasn't coke though, fun. so they'd have to come up with a new name for this drink. After some time unsuccessfully brainstorming with his team, Kite implored them to use their imagination. Or in German, ihre Fantasie prompting a salesman to utter Fanta. With that, the drink had its name. Oh, the other suggestions must have been fucking shocking if that was the best one. Gross. But I suppose that's wait, what, wait, what did I say? name. Piss? The other suggestions... Hitler juice... <laughs> Hitler juice. Panzer fuel. Food scrap soda. Which it is what exactly what that is. Brown drink. Glad they scratched that out. Sweet secrete. 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 Sprudel Doodle, Tosser Weiser, Tosser Wasser, Tosser Weiser, Axis Kiss, Nice Liquid. Honestly, man, you're trying to sell to the Nazis, Axis Kiss might have been the best one. Questions must but I mean that. The Nazis lost, so. But it had to get a rebrand anyway. Must have been fucking shocking if that was the best one. But I suppose that's what happens when you ask the Germans to use their imagination. Nothing good will come of it. Fanta became a big success in Germany. It basically became Germany's soft drink, as there were few alternatives. Kite was allowed some leniency when it came to the sugar rationing at the time, meaning Fanta was one of the sweetest things on the market. As such, Germans would buy Fanta not just to drink, but to add to the cooking as well. Christ almighty, I'd say that was rank. But Kite's favour within the Third Reich didn't end at rationing exemptions. He was appointed to the government's Office of Enemy Property, which meant he gained control wait, of the Coca-Cola plants in the countries <laughs> Germany was taking over as well. So everything that's there from another company, this guy is in charge of it all? Oh my god, bro, he got a big promotion. Well, Fanta thus spread across Europe. They had joy, they had fun, they had seasons in the sun, but the Nazis' time in the sun wouldn't last forever, and with their defeat at the end of the war, Max Kite was once again in a predicament. He had basically been running a completely separate company to America's Coca-Cola. So was this just his company now, or would the Americans take it all over and kick his ass out? Well, like most successful businessmen, Kite was happy enough to jump on board with whatever the prevailing ideology was at the time, whether it be the Third Reich or the Allies who had just defeated his country. Max Kite handed over all the money made during the war to the American Coca-Cola and his European branches were reunited with the parent company. Coca-Cola was very grateful to Kite for keeping the company afloat in times of crisis and they rewarded him for his efforts by giving him command of Coca-Cola Europe. With Coke back on the market, Fanta disappeared. It was only in 1955 that Coca-Cola reintroduced Fanta with a new orange flavoured recipe in response to Pepsi-Cola's launching of several new soft drinks. At this point, Pepsi is probably the most recurring character in my video all those videos are good check them out i've already seen them all so i'm not going to re-react to them because that's some fake stuff obviously today fanta is hugely popular although the coca-cola company would probably prefer if you didn't know about its origins as a drink made of food scraps because the nazis couldn't have coke which is why it's quite surprising that in 2015 they celebrated the 75th anniversary of fanta in germany with a vintage bottle design and authentic wartime flavor Bro, what the hell that seems like a bit of a misstep. Uh, I can't imagine Volkswagen doing a re-release of the fucking Kubelwagen. Eh, no. forget I said that. You might be saying, come on, Kukser, they shouldn't have to hide the circumstances of the drink's creation. They didn't do anything wrong. And that's fair enough. But, well, to advertise the vintage Fanta, Coke said they were bringing back the feeling of the good old times. Add to celebrate this. <laughs> and to celebrate this, we are bringing back the feeling of the good old times. But the new Fanta classic. Scheiße. The good old times, because when yeah. I think of the good old times, this is what I think of. All right, all right, all right, all right. 
We're not gonna see no war for no, 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 Cukeser. No, you're not getting my video demonetized, no, sir. As you As you can imagine, there was some backlash against this, and Coke replaced the ad and apologized. With because people remembered. <laughs> the representatives of saying, the 75-year-old brand had no association with Hitler or the Nazi party. I mean, yeah, it's not like Hitler himself ordered the creation of the drink, but to say there was no association with the Nazis isn't lie. entirely accurate, is it? <laughs> so keep this story in mind if Coke tries its hand on the old corporate high horse anytime soon. And if you're sick of all these bastards and are looking for a brand that isn't going to get all hypocritically sanctimonious on you uh -huh. well you've come to the wrong place to be honest okay. but at least uh, okay <laughs> okay i'm usually being facetious <laughs> when i'm a prick so if you can appreciate uh -huh. that give us a subscribe and watch more of my videos if yeah man cukes have got some good at five days 12 two weeks oh okay so he's not that uh infrequent okay i haven't seen i haven't seen these i've seen Wow, I'm, I'm just behind on Cukeser videos. You uh, liked this one. And if you didn't, I got two words for you. What you got? Stay safe. Uh, wait, hold on. Am I behind? I'm going to hit that with a like. Am I behind on Cukeser videos? Wow. I am. I'm behind. The last one I saw was Judge Fights the Lawyer, bro. This video is so good. Check it out. Wow, I haven't seen any of the... Wow, I really am behind on Cukeser videos. That's crazy. And I'm subscribed to... Yeah, I should just turn the bell on. That's the issue. That's the issue. When you subscribe, make sure you just hit the bell. Make sure you hit the bell for me too, man. I actually got a lot of fire, bro. I got a lot of fire cooking, bro. And like a lot of it's already cooked, bro. Like you, this video's being recorded now. You're probably not gonna see it till like a week from now, bro. I got so many videos that's cooking, bro. So many, bro. I, I hire some thumbnail artists, so the, the the thumbnail's looking good. I'm about to move into a brand new house. Looks good. I'm gonna make sure I got good. Uh, anti sound soundproofing bro like i'm fixing the microphone i'm about to buy some new stuff bro it's about to be fire bro and you the first ones to find out y'all the first ones man y'all rocking with me i'm rocking with y'all bro and for that we about to head out peace